the day Rina won the Best Actress Award, I was sitting in the audience. She held the trophy, her smile no longer showing any trace of the innocence and helplessness from five years ago when she found me. To win this award, the person I must thank the most is Francis, my Mr. Chen. Her Mr. Chen wasn't me. Almost at the moment Rina spoke, everyone in the venue turned their eyes toward me with looks of pity and surprise. This was because they all knew that Rina's success today was entirely due to my support and protection. I smiled silently and was the first to start clapping, but the girl who had lived in my heart since she was 16 years old had finally disappeared. Chapter 1 The day Rina won the Best Actress Award happened to be her 29th birthday. In truth, winning this award at 29 can hardly be considered early fame, but Rina entered the industry late, only making her first film three years ago. It was also a film I personally crafted for Rina. In three years, I gradually elevated Rina to the throne of box office queen. If I directed a film, she was the leading lady. Because of this, I offended quite a few people during those three years, but I didn't care. As I watched the woman standing under the spotlight, dressed in a champagne-colored gown, my thoughts drifted back to three years ago. Three years ago, I was 27 years old and had already established a name for myself in the entertainment industry. Hailed as the most talented director of my generation, my name guaranteed a film's quality, with no room for error. But no one knew that my entry into the entertainment industry was, in fact, for one person, for Rena. So when she appeared before me on that rainy night, drenched, my heart was far from the calm facade I displayed. Inside, it was a tempest, uncontrollable. Rena's body trembled from the cold as she stood at the bottom of the steps, looking up at me, the rainwater trickling down her neck and into her collar. Director Lin, I heard you're casting the female lead for your new movie, although I'm just a newcomer. I've been studying acting for a long time. I know a lot about your films. Could you please watch me audition for a scene? I, I didn't speak, just took off my coat and draped it over her shoulders. No need for an audition. It's you. In that moment, Rena's expression froze for a second. Then it was replaced by an incredibly radiant and dazzling smile. Just like in the summer when she was 16, wearing a dress, standing among white doves, she became the turning point in my otherwise mundane life. I had the courage to agree because Rena was the prototype for all the female leads in my scripts. I only film stories I've written myself, and she was my best choice. Three years, I spent countless sleepless nights exhausting all my inspiration to bring Rena to the trophy. Before coming here, she told me she had a surprise for me if she won this honor. Rena smiled. Her face on the big screen was flawless. She was born to be a star. Beautiful enough. And ruthless enough. I want to thank my fans for their support throughout this journey. It's because of them that I can stand here before you. Rena's voice was tinged with emotion. Her eyes glistening with tears. For a moment. I almost thought she was looking right at me. There is one person I must thank. Her voice melded with the sound of my heartbeat, and I couldn't hear anything else, nor see anyone unimportant. Rena looked straight into my eyes, and with those scarlet lips, she uttered the most merciless words. The person I want to thank is Francis, my Mr. Chen. Francis, a senior in the entertainment industry, a former best actor. I caught a glimpse of the mocking smile on Rena's lips, and the straight back I had maintained collapsed in an instant. It wasn't me. The person she wanted to thank, the person she wanted to have, was not me. The venue was so large, yet I felt like a clown with nowhere to hide. Everyone's eyes on me. For three years, the jealousy and resentment others felt because of my care for Rena were now laced with mockery. I looked at the photo on my phone of the girl in a white dress and smiled. Congratulations. Starting with me, the applause filled the entire venue. Chapter 2 Under the Spotlight Francis stepped onto the stage and then held Rena's hand as they lifted the trophy together. He looked at Rena, smiling gently. This trophy is something you truly deserve. I could already imagine the words that would flood Facebook tonight, praising them. Perfect match, golden couple, or a strong alliance. In any case, none of it has anything to do with me. I thought Rena no longer needed my protection. I stood up, taking advantage of everyone's attention being on them, and carefully turned to leave through the side door. However, the host's voice stopped me in my tracks, as we all know. Every movie Rena has starred in since her debut has been directed by director Lin. Is there a special connection here? I turned back and met Rena's gaze across the room. Over these three years, everyone who met me had gossiped about my relationship with Rena, but I always brushed it off with a laugh. Rena was a rising star, and neither love affairs nor rumors would benefit her, let alone rumors involving me. An actor and a director, I've seen enough in the entertainment industry to know how the media could spin that. Those terms should never be associated with Rena. I assumed Rena would brush it off as she usually did with some polite remarks, but to my surprise, she went along with the host's line of questioning. The first time I met director Lin, he told me that the female lead in his script was tailor-made for me. Ever since our first collaboration, 
Director Lin has sought me out for every film. To me, he's like a mentor, so I've never refused him. Rina's tone was gentle, but I felt as if I had plunged into an icy abyss. It was as if the girl who once held my hand, pleading for my help, had never existed. Francis, picking up on Rina's words, added, Rina is talented and beautiful. It's natural for a director to want her in his films, but I still hope that some people won't use their past kindness to repeatedly threaten her. Francis's words were harsh, almost accusing me of exploiting Rina for publicity. Yet, I had paid Rina for all her performances, and knowing she was unknown, I even gave her an extra 30% for the first two films. But now, in their narrative, I had become someone who exploits past favors. I stood there, fists clenched, my heart racing with anger, but Rina continued to look at me with that same gaze. Proud, cold, even disdainful. What right did she have? I knew this wasn't the right moment to defend myself, so I turned and left. The live stream comments on Facebook had already exploded into chaos. Naturally, Rena and Francis's fans were supporting them, while some more rational netizens were still defending me. But as a director, my fan base couldn't compare to theirs. And before long, my Facebook was flooded with attacks. The media started to speculate, with some even saying that without Rena, my films would be nothing. I suppressed my anger and prepared to post the truth on Facebook, after all, I still had the chat logs with Rena, but before I could publish it, I received a call from Rena, Ken, I hope you can stay silent about what happened tonight, why should I? Otherwise, I'll tell the media that you're responsible for your brother's death. Chapter 3 Rena's tone was cold and emotionless, it felt like an arrow had pierced my heart, I could feel the scalding blood flowing out of my chest, the gaping wound allowing the cold wind to pour in relentlessly but the one who hurt me was the girl I had been unable to forget since I was 16. Rena, what right do you have to treat me like this? I closed my eyes, my voice trembling uncontrollably, but my vulnerability elicited no sympathy from Rena. This is what you owe me, owe her. In this life, I owe no one, except my brother. After saying those words, Rena hung up. I listened to the dial tone on the other end and leaned my head against the window. My brother died when I was 13. We were twins when we were born because I had a congenital heart condition. Our parents abandoned me at the door of an orphanage. It wasn't until I was eight that my brother happened to meet me, and we discovered our connection. From that day on, my brother and I often met. His presence filled the void of family in my life, easing my pain and sorrow. My brother told me that after our parents abandoned me, they argued day and night and soon divorced. He went with our mother, who later remarried, but my brother wasn't happy in that family. On our 13th birthday, my brother promised to give me the gift our mother had given him. He said he had received many gifts, and the next one should be mine. But that day, I waited a long time, and he never showed up. The snow blanketed the entire city. Following the directions my brother had given me, I slowly walked to the address, only to find a horrifying sight on the snow-covered street. There was blood, bright red blood. My brother lay on the ground, with a basketball rolling beside him. Later, our mother found me. She kept me with her, but she became mentally unstable after my brother's death. She often called me by my brother's name, and I never corrected her. She divorced that man, and after my brother died, my heart condition healed. He gave me his heart. Before he died, my brother held my hand and said he was sorry for letting me suffer alone for so many years, but in truth, he was the one who had done the most for me. After I graduated from middle school, I left home, and it was there that I met Rena. She might have already forgotten me, a boy she encountered briefly on the street, but I remembered her. I remembered her dancing among the white doves her loud laughter, her bright and sunny face, and the small daisy she placed beside me, are you my fan, don't be sad, receiving a flower from your idol should make you happy, let me light up your world, Rena reached out and poked the corners of my mouth, lifting them into a smile, I just stared at her, as if at that moment, I had truly seen the angel my brother spoke of, Ken, what should we do about tonight, my assistant's voice interrupted my thoughts, I opened my eyes and looked at the now dark phone screen, People often talk about the unforgettable first love. The Rena from before was indeed my unforgettable first love, but now, she means nothing to me. I lifted my head and looked at the moonlight hidden behind the clouds. Then I sent that article. Rena, you still don't understand me. You don't know that some things, for me, have long become old wounds. How could they possibly be the reason to stop me now? Chapter 4 By the time I got home, my phone had been bombarded with calls from Rena. When I didn't answer, she started frantically sending me messages. Ken. What do you mean by this? Ken, answer the phone. You need to explain yourself. Ken, don't ignore me. I'm scared. Do you not like me anymore? Are you not going to support me anymore? Ken, didn't you say you would always be my number one fan? Rena's messages kept coming one after another. So I muted her chat and then opened Facebook. 
the article I had just posted had already skyrocketed to the top of the trending list. There were still plenty of insults from Rena's fans. But fortunately, many rational voices were also present. So Rena wants to have it both ways. Huh. After using someone up, she just kicks them away. I'm really worried about our Emperor Chen's future. To the person above, do you think Francis is any better? Our guy was just deceived. Poor director Lin, being so blinded by love. I laughed out loud at these comments. They were right, being blinded by love is truly foolish. Luckily, I've already recovered. There was a knock on the door. At this hour, it could only be Rena. I opened the door and looked at Rena, standing there, furious, and found it almost amusing. In the first two years after our reunion, she never looked at me with such eyes. In front of me, she was always gentle, kind, always the radiant sun. When did that change? Probably when online comments like, Rena can make it on her own without Ken, started to appear. She began to think I was holding back her career, that I was too controlling, that I wasn't as great as she once thought. During our worst fights, she even pointed at my nose and cursed me out. In the end, I would have to carefully apologize, begging for her forgiveness. Ken, what do you mean by this? Rena pushed my shoulder with her hand. I leaned against the doorframe without moving, watching her coldly, and let out a sneer. What do I mean? Rena, you slandered me. Can't I defend myself? People have the right to know the truth. The truth. You just want to ruin me. Is it because you're upset about me going public with Francis? Ken, I'm just your puppet. All the kindness you've shown me was because of her. Rena screamed. Her expression twisted, but her words left me confused. Her? Who is she? Seeing my silence, Rena seemed to take it as encouragement. She raised her chin and sneered. Did I hit the nail on the head? Ken, do you think I don't know? The girl in the white dress in your photo album is your true love, isn't she? All the care and effort you've given me was just because I look like her, and you used me as a substitute. What era do you think we're in? You're still playing this stand-in game. Ken, you make me sick. Rena's eyes were filled with tears. That photo, because it was backlit, didn't clearly show the other person's face. So, Rena thought it was someone else. I found it quite amusing. Because of this bizarre misunderstanding, she wanted to destroy all the efforts I had made the good reputation I had built, the films I had worked so hard to create, the world I had strived to build, she disregarded all of it. Indeed, a figure like an unforgettable first love is only fit to exist in memories. Rena, let's just say I made a mistake about you. I closed the door, leaving Rena outside, still hurling curses, but later that night, a recording of my conversation with Rena was leaked online. It was wrong of me to say those things, but it was all because I was in so much pain. The person I trusted, the one I was grateful to, only saw me as someone else's shadow. It turns out that everything was part of Rena's plan. Chapter 5. I have to admit, she's very skilled at manipulating public opinion. In just a few hours, the online criticism of Rena for being ungrateful had completely shifted to sympathy for her. As someone who had been used as a stand-in, even when some netizens pointed out the benefits Rena had gained from this relationship, they were quickly rebutted. The reason given was always the same, Rena's wounded heart as a young girl. I didn't pay attention to the growing online frenzy. I just turned off my phone and lay down on the bed. I was too tired. So tired that I needed a good sleep. For the first time in a long while, I dreamed of my brother. Although he and I looked alike, no one ever mistook me for my brother. Probably because he always had a smile on his face. No matter what hardships he faced, no matter how painful the situation, my brother was always smiling. Even when facing death, he didn't show the slightest hint of fear. He just smiled, gently stroking my hair. And with that warm voice, he said his final words to me. Ken, live your life well. Live a good life. In the dream, I saw the scene of the first time I met my brother. I was sitting on a park bench, watching a family of three laughing together in the distance, with the cold wind seeping through my tattered clothes. That's when my brother walked up to me. His eyes held a look of surprise, but he didn't hesitate to squat down in front of me, staring at me. It took a long time before he finally spoke his first words. What's your name? I think I'm your brother. From the first glance, he knew he was my brother. Later, when I asked him how he knew, he said that seeing me sitting there like a little abandoned animal, he just felt like he had to protect me, and brothers are supposed to protect their younger siblings. I woke up with a start just as the first rays of the sun broke through, the images of my brother's final moments flashing in my mind. It took me a while to realize my current situation. I picked up my phone, the screen filled with missed calls and messages, most of them urging me to check Facebook. I opened WeChat and Rena's pinned chat was glaringly obvious, her messages deeply disappointing. Ken, you forced me into this. I, Rena, will never be anyone's stand-in. Looking back, it seems like there were signs all along. About three months ago, Rena took part in a variety show where she met Francis, and gradually began to distance herself from me. 
I had wondered why, but my experiences growing up in the orphanage made it hard for me to question others. Now I understand, she must have seen the photo in my album. She didn't ask me, and I didn't tell her, because I always thought that the past was the past, and as long as Rena was by my side now, that was enough, but I was wrong. I told my assistant that I would hold a press conference in three days to put an end to this ridiculous farce, most likely. It would also mark the end of my career. I need to take a break, and as my brother wished, I'll use this heart to see the world. But unexpectedly, I received a call from Francis. He said he wanted to talk. Honestly, I didn't think there was anything to discuss with Francis. Before all of this, I only thought of him as a famous actor in the industry. But Francis seemed insistent, and I didn't want to waste any more time on him. So I agreed to his request. Francis arranged for us to meet at a private dining restaurant with good privacy. When I arrived at the private room, he was already sitting at the head of the table, seeing me. Francis flashed the commercial smile I despised most in this industry. Sorry, too many reporters are following me. I hope you don't mind meeting here, Director Lin. I shook my head. After all, Francis is famous, and not every restaurant can be a good fit. What do you want to talk about? He crossed his legs and leaned back in the chair, his eyes narrowing slightly. I know who Director Lin's so-called unforgettable first love is. It's Rena. Chapter 6. My hand trembled slightly. Before coming here, I had imagined many things Francis might want to say to me, but this wasn't one of them. What do you want to say? I dropped my previously casual attitude and carefully scrutinized the men before me. He was no longer a young actor fresh on the scene. Time had left him with a sense of steadiness and calm, like aged wine with a unique flavor. But it was precisely because of this that Francis's eyes seemed like bottomless pits, making one feel an inexplicable fear. Don't be nervous, Director Lin. Rena is a great prospect. She's beautiful, young and most importantly, she's very naive. What Francis said was true. Over the past three years, under my protection, Rena had been shielded from the filth of the industry. She was pure, and only pure actors can be painted with the colors the director desires. That's what makes them talented. Francis chuckled lightly and continued. So, I chose her. A sense of unease began to rise within me. What exactly are you trying to do? Director Lin. I'm not young anymore. You know how fast the entertainment industry changes. There are so many people eyeing my position, and I don't need to name them all. Using a female actor to keep the audience's attention, using emotions to capture a portion of the fan base, these are common tactics in the industry. Unfortunately, Rena was too attached to you, so I had to use an extreme method to uproot you from her heart. Francis's tone was flat, as if he were discussing something completely mundane, but to me, every word was piercing. I swallowed hard. My hand clenched into a fist on my knee. So, you made her misunderstand. Francis raised an eyebrow, propping his chin up with one hand. He didn't speak, but I already knew the answer. I stood up and strode over to Francis, grabbing his collar and yanking him out of the chair. I could accept Rena hating me because of a misunderstanding. I could even accept her falling in love with someone else. But I couldn't accept her becoming someone's plaything, becoming a puppet controlled at will. Are you out of your mind? She's a person. So what? Helping me is her honor. Francis's eyes held no fear, no guilt, there was only a satisfied smile. I raised my other hand, ready to strike him, but the door to the private room was suddenly pushed open from the outside. Stop, Ken, what are you doing? It was Rena. She pushed my body away and then stood in front of Francis. That beautiful, stubborn face looked up at me, her eyes full of anger. Rena, listen to me, this man is lying to you. I, the one who's been lying to me is you. You wrote that woman into your script and then had me play her. Ken. You make me sick. Suddenly, I couldn't find the words to speak. Rena's voice was full of disgust for me. Francis, are you okay? I'm fine. I'm sorry for meeting him behind your back. I originally thought I could convince him to apologize to you. Francis had already put away his smile, now looking like a wounded puppy, carefully holding onto the edge of Rena's clothes. Fool, let's go. She shielded Francis as they walked past me. I reached out, grabbing her wrist. Rena, what if I told you that person has always been you? Rena didn't stop walking, just sneered. Ken, do you think I'm an idiot? If it were me, why didn't you tell me before? She left with Francis, the warmth in her hand slowly fading away. Why didn't I tell her? Because back then, I was too much of a mess. I always wanted to show her my best self, at least a version of me that had achieved something, not the defeated person I was back then. But now, maybe it's too late for everything. Chapter 7 It seems that Rena wanted to retaliate for the time I almost hit Francis. So the gossip accounts on the internet began to spread stories about my childhood. They talked about how I grew up in an orphanage, how I did a lot of petty crimes to survive, and how I caused my brother's death. My assistant saw the comments online and was furious, muttering under his breath but not wanting me to hear. He was afraid I'd be upset. But in truth, 
I had already known. If they want to curse, let them. It must be uncomfortable to hold it in. My assistant put down his phone and sighed. Ken, are you really not going to make movies anymore? I took a sip of wine, sprawling on the sofa. Over the years, I've earned enough money to live comfortably. I'm done. I want to go out and see the world. Making movies is a process of giving. And in these past three years, I've lost the ability to keep giving. My assistant seemed to want to say something more but ultimately stayed silent. But when I turned around, I saw his eyes filled with tears. I was a bit startled. Why are you crying? He wiped the corner of his eye with the back of his hand. His voice heavy. It's nothing. I just think it's a shame. Ken, you love movies so much. And now you're just giving them up. And Rena, you've done so much for her these past three years. And yet, in the end, he didn't finish his sentence. I looked at the wine swirling in the glass and said nothing. Do I regret all I did for Rena? Honestly, I don't. I consider it paying the price for the dreams of my youth. Besides, if it weren't for Rena, I might never have entered the entertainment industry, never become a director. It was just because that little girl once said she wanted to stand in front of the camera one day and make everyone fall in love with her. On the day of the press conference, many people showed up, most of them hoping to grab a headline. Only a few were my fans. I sat on the stage, looking at the sea of people below, and suddenly found it somewhat amusing. At 16, I could never have imagined that one day I'd stand before so many people. Thinking about it, I suppose I should thank Rena, thank her for helping me find something I love doing, and thank her for making so many people notice Ken. I believe everyone is here today because of the recent events on Facebook. First, I want to say that I don't have an unforgettable first love. If I do, it's the 16-year-old Rena. I had Rena's photo processed to reveal her face and displayed it on the big screen. As soon as I finished speaking, the murmurs in the audience came to a sudden halt, probably because they couldn't believe it themselves. I lowered my gaze and recounted the entire process of how I met Rena, including the story of my brother. These were things I had once wanted to keep hidden, but now that I was finally saying them out loud, it didn't seem so difficult. I became a director because of Rena, hoping one day to make her the leading lady in my films. Many people have said that Rena looks her best in my films, and that's because all my scripts, all my heroines, were written for her. But later, she finally appeared in front of my camera, yet she was no longer the person I once hoped for. I looked at the flashing lights in front of me and smiled brightly. The heart inside my chest belongs to my brother. He once told me he wanted me to live an extraordinary life. Before I turned 30, I lived for Rena and for movies. From now on, I want to live for myself, for my brother's heart. I won't be making any more movies because my leading lady has already died. The flashing lights came to a stop, and I saw my fans standing below, their faces streaming with tears. This might be unfair to them, but it's a choice I have to make. Ken, in the silent room, Rena's voice, trembling, was exceptionally clear. Chapter 8. I don't know when she arrived or how much she heard, but none of that matters to me anymore. My gaze lingered on Rena for just a moment before I turned to look at the other reporters. Then, I stood up and bowed to the crowd. Thank you all for your support over the years. I hope we'll have the chance to meet again. I turned and headed backstage, with Rena's voice calling my name echoing in my ears. But I didn't stop. There was no need to stop anymore. Rena caught up with me just as I was about to get into the car. She grabbed my arm. Her eyes red as if she had been crying. Why? Why didn't you tell me? I just looked at her, pulling my arm free after a moment. Was it necessary? Besides, didn't I tell you that day in the private room? The questions Rena had wanted to ask got stuck in her throat. Her lips moved. But in the end, she only looked at me with a hopeful expression. Ken, I know I was wrong. Since that person was me all along, can we start over? Can I still be your leading lady? If this were in the past, I might have thought Rena couldn't bear to leave me. But now, I can't even tell if she wants me or just the role of leading lady in my films. Is it the fame? The status? I shook my head, not softening even a bit at her show of vulnerability. I can't capture your beauty anymore. Rena, the only version I can capture is the 16-year-old you. I got into the car, letting Rena pound on my window. But the car didn't stop. It drove off into the distance. The impact of this press conference was huge. The trending topics on Facebook were filled with my name and Rena's. Some even called for Francis and Rena to distance themselves from each other. I smacked my forehead, almost forgetting about this. Given the previous incident of the recording of my meeting with Rena, how could I have gone to see Francis without any preparation? So. The conversation in the private room became my final Facebook post. The people who had been clamoring for Rena to stay away from Francis instantly went quiet. Meanwhile, onlookers were entertained, saying they were a perfect match, but none of this mattered to me. I bought a ticket for Tibet the next day, ready to see the place known for its freedom. The next day, when I opened my door, I found Rena sitting outside. It looked like she hadn't slept all night. Her eyes were bloodshot. When she saw me, 
Rina immediately stood up, but her quick movement caused her to stumble from low blood pressure. I just stood there, not moving as she caught herself against the wall. Ken, where are you going? Does it matter to you? I had never spoken to Rina in such a cold tone. She pressed her lips together, struggling to get used to it. Ken, do you really have to do this? We didn't have to end up like this. Rina's self-righteous tone almost made me laugh. The person who led us to this ending was always you, wasn't it? Rina, I don't regret meeting you or helping you for three years. But even a baby learns to walk on its own after three years. You can't keep sucking my blood forever, can you? Rina's face turned pale, and she shook her head in a panic, trying to explain. It's not like that, Ken. It's because I love you. It's because I love you that I got so angry, that I hated you. Love me. Maybe she did, once. But when that love is no longer pure due to personal gain, it ceases to exist. And what about Francis? That was just to make you jealous. Rena's voice was frantic. I looked at the face that had once filled my thoughts, but now it no longer moved me. Rena, I believe you once loved me. But we can't pretend the past didn't happen. We both know how clumsy Francis's lies were. Yet you believed him. You didn't even ask me before nailing me to a cross of shame. That's not love. Because with me, you didn't even have the most basic trust. You were just too eager to escape my control. So you chose a wrong path in your desperation. I ignored Rena's expression and walked away with my suitcase. Later, I heard that Rena waited for a long time at the airport that day until she fainted from low blood sugar. Some were moved by her, while others thought it was just another act. In any case, it no longer concerned me. Chapter 9 I traveled to many places, so many sights. When you're on the road, you don't think about all the unpleasant things from the past. I had a small portrait of my brother drawn and tattooed on my chest, so it feels like he's never left me. The entertainment industry now seems like something from a past life to me, but my assistant is still working in the industry, so he occasionally tells me about Rena and Francis's recent activities. As Francis predicted, he gradually faded from the public eye. The roles he gets have shifted from the dominant male lead to the father of the male lead, and every time he appears, netizens dig up old scandals and criticize him mercilessly. The things he said to me back then have been turned into various catchphrases and jokes by netizens. As for Rena, she's still active on screen, but after leaving my scripts and direction, her once praised acting skills have become mediocre at best. Even her face has begun to show the wear of time. She pinned my name at the top of her Facebook, as if to display her deep feelings. But unfortunately, not many people care. After a year of traveling, I returned to the city. One day, by chance, I saw Rena while I was out. It seemed they were filming a TV drama. The director, whom I had met a few times and who had always liked my work, invited me to visit the set. I had nothing else to do, so I went along. Rena was playing some secondary character, standing still as the female lead threw water in her face and slapped her. The young actress, who looked about 23 or 24, kept messing up the scene, and Rena's expression visibly worsened. It was obvious to everyone that the young actress was doing it on purpose. The director whispered to me that she was a fan of mine and had never liked Rena. I just smiled, not stopping them or saying a word. As I left the set, I saw Rena standing in a corner, bent over, speaking to the assistant director. She looked humble and pitiful. The white dress she wore had long lost its original charm. The wind blew through her hair, and Rena turned around, meeting my gaze. Her expression froze completely at that moment. I just smiled and waved at her. The thing about unforgettable first love is that even when the person is right in front of you, it doesn't matter. She died at the age of 16.